traditional LiDAR is too power hungry, too large, too expensive for mass deployment. Microvision redefined LiDAR from the silicon up. Introducing Movia S, smaller than ever, engineered for ultra low power, designed with automotive cost structures in mind. Movia S is LiDAR that scales, enabling also a complete LiDAR solution with Microvision's perception software on board. Because cost and performance are no trade-offs, and at Microvision, we understand both. Good afternoon and welcome to the Microvision press conference, their first ever at EIA. And good morning to those of us, those of you joining virtually from the US and Canada. Here today to tell you why Microvision technology is so special is Microvision CTO, Glenn DeVos. Glenn has more than 30 years of experience in the automotive industry, most of it working with advanced sensor technology. Glenn spent his time most recently with Aptiv as CTO, where he led teams producing advanced radar technology, advanced LiDAR technology, sensor fusion software, and ultimately, autonomous driving systems. Before I turn it over to Glenn, those of you here with us today in person will have the opportunity to ask questions when Glenn's done. We'll have a microphone for you, and we'll be glad to hand you those mics when they're ready. <coughs> Without further ado, Microvision CTO, Glenn DeVos. Thank you, Zach. And great to be here with all of you, both in the booth as well as online. What we're going to talk about today is the introduction of Microvision's Tri-LiDAR architecture and why this is so impactful, in fact, redefining LiDAR for automotive. But I think it's important to start with a little bit about where are we today with LiDAR as an industry. If you think about LiDAR over the past 10 years, kind of the cycle that's been experienced is LiDAR is expensive. You can only really have one LiDAR in a car, so it's got to do everything for the sensing and the perception short range, long range, field of interest at 200 meters. And by the time you put all that content into that sensor, it's large, it's power hungry, and it's expensive and difficult to package in the vehicle. In fact, what you see are you know, bumps on the roofs of cars and very awkward packaging for LiDAR. Where that's led us is basically LiDAR is a premium option on a premium vehicle from a premium OEM which means it's a niche technology with very low volume. That's not, a path that, uh, that's not a pathway to mass adoption, which is where we want to be. So try LiDAR, what does that do? How does that help us get to mass adoption? Well, basically, it breaks the perception task into more manageable elements. You don't have one sensor doing it all. You break it into short range, you break it into long range tasks, where the sweet spot of those technologies can, can be utilized. It's really the same thing we did with radar over the last 25 years as I was working in, in radar. It's the same thing we did with camera systems. It's generally what you do with perceptions, perception systems, broadly speaking, where you break it into the key elements where you can really find the sweet spot of the technologies to meet that need. And that's what TriLiDAR is. In fact, it really takes advantage of our Movia S sensor, which is what's new and what we're talking about here. It takes advantage of our movie as sensor for the short range task. This is a high performance sensor that enables you to have a 180 degree by 130 degree field of view for industry applications, for defense applications, as well as 90 by 60 for automotive applications. That enables you to simplify the role of the long range sensor. You're not asking it to cover a wide field of view. You can narrow the field of view. You can get it to focus on that long range region of interest much more effectively than if you're asking it to do everything. Now, what I'm holding here is the Movia S, what we call an integrated sensor. This is a sensor that can do perception. It can do features on top of perception. It's a great product for industrial, for defense, where you want the full stack. In reality, for automotive, you really only want the point cloud coming out of the sensor. The OEMs take care of fusion, they take care of the features. You want a high quality point cloud coming up. That's where the Movia satellite comes into play. 
This one actually is integrated for industrial applications and robotaxi applications, but the satellite sensor is even smaller than what I'm holding here, about eight cubic inches, easy to package in the vehicle. And so that's the impact that TriLiDAR has. It enables you to really simplify the overall integration of the sensing system into the vehicle. And in doing so, smaller packages, lower power, a much better and rich point cloud from the system as opposed to having one single sensor do it all. And as I mentioned, it's exactly the same approach that we took with radar, with long range radar, short range radar, with cameras. Radar, you now have three to five radar on every car. LiDAR has to go on the same path, except there's one key, one key element to that, and that's cost. You have to be able to optimize the cost of the system. And we do that in a couple ways. One is by being able to apply the same technologies that are in these sensors across many markets. So the fact is, this sensor, its imaging head unit is perfect for industrial applications where I need that 180 degree field of view. It's perfect for, it's perfect for defense applications for mapping and terrestrial, terrestrial surveillance and those types of applications. It's great for uh, robotaxis where I need short range, but again, wide field of view, seeing along the drip line. So it has many different applications so it can scale. And so it's not just dependent on one platform from an OEM. And by doing that, we help drive the cost of the system down. The other thing is, you're really using this, the best technology for the task. This uses what we call sequential flash LiDAR. That's pure solid state. No mechanical moving parts, no mirrors, no spinners, nothing. It's pure solid state, which means two things. One, very reliable, compact, low power, but it also means that essentially my cost floor is much lower. Electromechanical assemblies are always have a higher cost floor than solid state technologies. And this is exactly what you see in automotive, the move from electromechanical to whether it's drive-by wire systems, solid state radar, it's always moving into that solid state uh, arena to drive cost, cost of the product, cost of capital for manufacturing, cost of investment. All of these things driving the cost down. Movia S is what enables us to do that. And that's what's new about and new and enabling about the tri-LiDAR architecture. At the same time, it also simplifies, as I mentioned, the long range LiDAR uh, re requirements, which mean that instead of a large box, you can continue to shrink this box. Again, this is a fully integrated sensor with an SOC. If I just wanna deliver a point cloud, I make this much smaller, much lighter, and more importantly, lower power. So I can easily package it in the vehicle, not on the roof, but rather either behind the windscreen or in the grill, which is where sensors really want to be. At the end of the day though, as good as this is, it ultimately needs to be affordable for the vehicle. So let's talk about cost. Let's go to the next chart. You hear a lot in LiDAR over the last years, well, why, aren't the, why isn't the cost there? And, and the, the phrase you hear the most is, well, cost will come down when volumes come. The reality is in automotive, it works exactly the other way. Volume comes when cost comes down. For radar, when we started making radar as an industry back 25 years ago, it was extremely expensive. The volume didn't come because more radar usage was, was there. It came because we innovated. We went from electromechanical to solid state to software enabled radar. The same is true with camera systems. Volume comes when cost comes down. And that's exactly where we're focused. Performance is a given. We'll have the best point cloud you can have. That's not the differentiator. The differentiator is it's a smaller package, it's lower power consumption, and it's 40 to 50% lower cost at when you compare like to like in terms of overall point cloud performance. That means for the OEM, you can start to put it on not just premium options on premium vehicles, you can put this into the more value segment vehicles, which is where we want to get be. These sensors, this next generation, which is scheduled for a two, uh, 2028 launch, these are targeted to be $200 or less in the corners, $300 for long range. That's this next generation. Our roadmap brings that further down. And that's how you go from being a premium option to mass adoption.
you really drive the performance, but you also drive the cost where it needs to be for the adoption of the technology. So we're happy to share that. We'll move over to Q&A now. And uh, glad to answer any questions you might have about the technology or about microvision. The first question would be, if this is a logical system that was also done with cameras and with radar, why has no one else tried to do this before for LiDAR? Well, it was a little bit of a vicious circle, I would say, and a self-reinforcing phenomenon in the industry. Because when a technology first comes out, it tends to be more costly. So it's frequently like HUD and like you know, heads-up display or power windows. It tends to be on the more premium vehicles. But what kept happening was, because it was so expensive, more of the content kept getting driven into the LiDAR sensor. And generally speaking, the LiDAR suppliers were welcoming that. Yeah, more content. And that's where it becomes a little bit counterintuitive. I'm going to break it apart. I'm going to have more components that I need to manage. But at the end of the day, I lower my system costs. I get to scale faster. And the reason it really wasn't being adopted previously is there wasn't really a good automotive grade, short range, high performance LiDAR available. And that's what Movia S is. Hi, can you give us the numbers? Uh, what nanometer light and how far does the long range one see the black tire on the road? Yeah, so in terms of, these are uh, 905 and I think the long range is 940. And the range typically for the short range is, depending on field of view, 30 to 50 meters. And for that detection, 90% of a 10% reflective target with 90% confidence. The long range is 220 meters for that same uh, detection on a 10% reflective target uh, with 90 degree, 90% uh, degree of confidence. Um, so those are ranges which are, we think, in the sweet spot for automotive applications, for highway pilot, for some level of urban driving. Um, depending on the field of view for the short range sensor, you can open up additional urban driving or really more, I should say, city driving applications. And what's really kind of exciting is when you kind of, when you see the point cloud, and you kind of see when you're, it's pointing over there, but it's picking up all of this, you can, you can start to see how this can really augment your ADAS functions, especially when you talk about vulnerable road user detection and mitigation. And I know driving in Hamburg with e-scooters and bicyclists, the VRU detection is going to become very, very important for us. But that's, uh, those are kind of the general facts. And we have the stat sheets here as well. Are there any other questions from the audience? Jim Montevalli. Can you name any uh, actual OEM uh, customers for this now, or has that not happened yet? That's just starting. The, we're really timed for that kind of the next wave of OEM RFQs and sourcing activities, which really have just started. That'll occur you know, for really the next year and a half or so. We expect those sourcings to occur. So that, uh, that process just started. Any other questions? All right, last opportunity, potentially, live from the floor to ask a question. So if not, Glenn, I've got a few for you. All right. And the first is, can other non-microvision LIDARs work with your architecture? Yeah, and the answer is yes. At the end of the day, these sensors deliver a point cloud. And typically, point clouds are integrated by the OEM or within the domain controller, ADAS or automated driving uh, domain controller, that's where the point clouds are integrated, that's where sensor fusion takes place and perception is, is really hosted. So it really is, a, it can, we can marry our short range LiDAR with any long range LiDAR that's delivering a point cloud. Um, it simplifies the task for any long range LiDAR. Um, it's not, the three sensors don't have to be tied together. Um, the, the converse could be true as well. And so, you know, we're, as we look at it, we want to be flexible in terms of how the OEM adopts. This is very common in, in radar, short range radar done by one tier one, long range by another. So um, it is a, uh, the OEM can choose to set up their perception system any way they want. What about production timing? Do you have a timeline for us? Our timing and what we're quoting right now is 2028 start of production ready. So. 
And you talked more about the short range. Yep. Can you talk a little more about the long? Yeah, we're in the process now with our Maven product line of essentially redesigning our long range lighter with a tri-lighter architecture in place. And so what's exciting there is we're able to basically utilize our MEMS technology, which is Microvision's legacy, and that's the one of the really critical areas that they can focus on, but we can use MEMS for the scanning mechanism. And because we've simplified the horizontal scanning and can achieve a 22, around 22 degree vertical scanning, we can do that with simply two MEMS and very simple optics into a very small package. And with total power consumption of somewhere around 10 watts, and which means I can package it in the car without active cooling. I can use passive cooling. I can fit it in you know, behind the mirror very easily. And so it's really simplifying that product. We'll have first prototypes of our Maven out uh, here in the early part of next year. And are you the only company? Is Microvision the only one that can do this? No, ultimately what we're talking about is an architecture. And just like we saw with radar and vision-based perception systems, um, the architecture isn't proprietary to uh, microvision. Uh, but what is, and where we need to really innovate and be different is the performance we can deliver for the size and the cost. And that is what we're focused on uh, very, very uh, aggressively. We want to be able to Position LiDAR for adoption, not just for level three and niche applications, but really for the broader ADAS market. One last question to finish on, and it relates to the future. And how do you really future proof, especially when there's a lot of discussion over time of flight versus uh, FMCW <laughs> LiDAR? Yeah. Well, the, the exciting part of this business, and this is true of perception in general, is that if you look at our roadmaps, you know, technology continues to change. Four years ago, we weren't talking about short range LiDAR in this manner. So whether it's moving from a time of flight for FMCW, which today tends to be more costly, more power and processing hungry, um, you know, whether it's that or it's looking at different, you know, 1550 versus 905, we're always looking at those options. And we look at them through the lens of what delivers the performance you need for the feature at the lowest total cost. And how do we drive that? So for Microvision, we always want to make sure that we have available to us the best technology for the application. Today, TriLiDAR is that next first step. The next step, Gen 2, we want to drive costs down further. Other technologies may help us do that. Great. Glenn, thanks for your time. If you want more information on Microvision, I think a yep. QR code is going to appear on the screen here shortly. It's already you available. Need, you need to go there. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know I was still on camera. Uh, if you would like more information about Microvision, a QR code will appear here shortly and is uh, shareable uh, through their website as well. And uh, without further ado, once again, thank you for attending Microvision's first ever EAA press conference. Thank you, everyone.